not the thing. House. Good morning, good morning, People's Church. <laughs> it's a great day to bless the Lord together. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We sung before a way maker, miracle workers. I believe today God made more miracles like never because I'm talking in English <laughs> with you and I had the opportunity to share the word of God. It's a big miracle for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We are in a series of My House. Pastor Chris preached for two weeks on this topic. I will start today but Matthew 25th from verse 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep in his right and the goats in his left. Then the king will say to those in his right, Come. You who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was, I need clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you come to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Amen to this wonderful passage. Jesus expects us to take care, to care for the least of these. We can make a long list of these people, but our focus today is on strangers. We say strangers in Spanish, extraño. Can you say with me, extraños? Amen, amen. What do you mean by stranger? We usually, we usually tell our kids as parents to not talk or associate with strangers, right? Yes. <laughs> Which is a necessary and good advice, but I'm not talking about that kind of strangers today. A stranger is me coming from Cuba to a land where I was not born and raised. I don't have the knowledge of how to interact with people. I don't have the language. I don't know the culture. There are hard situations I have faced to move to America. So is my husband who smuggled through the border and can't speak English. He was 17 years old when he crossed the border through San Antonio, Texas, and at the checkpoint, they gave him a paper with court appointment. He feared deportation and did not show up at the court. He moved to his family who are in Ohio. 
Having lived in U.S. for 13 years old and get married to me, and has two handsome boys, aged three years old and two months old at that time. He was followed by a police car one day to his house and arrested for traffic violation in our neighborhood. He was arrested in front of the three years old boy and me at our own driveway. He was deported with, within three months' time to Honduras. Mind you, I am a green card holder, legal resident, and in the process to be citizen. I have the right to have my husband granted green card and was not able to afford for the long process when he had a traffic violation. And this is not only me, but if you come to the Hispanic ministry, you will see mostly singles mom for one or another reasons. Do you want to know how you can identify strangers? Those couches in the mall with men and women on them sitting there with a dice, look, on their face, those are strangers. But when Jesus said in Matthew 25, I was a stranger and you took me in, he was not talking about sitting in the mall, was he? What was he talking about? And what was the big deal about taking him in? The phrase taking me in translates to a single word. The word is the verb form of synagogue. It literally means to gather together. The synagogue was the place where the Jews gathered. Jesus says, I was out of place. I was alone. I was surrounded by unwelcome. And you brought me in with you. You made me belong with you. Being out of place means being in a difficult position in life means being out without a place of refuge, being in a vulnerable state, having no place to, day, to lay down and rest, have no place to let down your word. Many people brag about their ancestors coming over in the Mayflower, but the native people went down to meet and welcome the boat. There are people in this country who are strangers. Many of them children who are here by no choice of their own. They don't have a place to live, they don't know the language, and they often have fled from a country where life was much worse for them. And we call these people aliens. We don't know exactly what we should do for them or with them. But I think it is clear that they are strangers and they need help. That remind me uh, my last time when I was, um, when I visited my husband in my way back at the Houston airport, um, I saw um, a boy in the line um, to board in the um, airplane he looks like maybe 16, 17 years old. And he was holding his ticket, but he was like, like a stranger. Like he feels like he was lost, just follow the paper and follow people. And I feel sorry. And I approached him and trying to talk with him. And I said, do you speak in Spanish? Because he looks Spanish. He said, yes, si, sí, hablo español. So he, his face changed. When I talk to him, and I say, I, um, I ask him, are you going to Cincinnati, right? He say, yes, yes. So I say, well, we are going in, in the same <laughs> airplane. I will try to sit next to you if I can. But our seat was very far. And by my surprise, I realized that one of the only seats empty in the airplane was the next seat next to this guy. So 
in the middle of the flight, I asked permission and sit next to him. And I tried to talk to him, and I said, oh, don't be scared. I'm here to help you. I will try to reach your family because his phone was already um, off, and, and he don't know how to communicate with his family who's coming to pick it up in the airport and things. And he uh, he's, um, started to um, tell me his story, and he said, I left my country. He came from Honduras so, since May. It was July. Basically, it was like three months in the way to come here. He said, I had to leave my country because the gangs had treated me that they will kill me and kill my grandma if I don't sell drugs for them. And they beat me really bad, and I have to leave. To leave. So and I said, where are your parents? He said, my father was killed. My mom left me when I was 12 years old. Can you imagine? My heart was broke. And I was checking in my purse, like, at least I found $50 cash, and I gave it to him. And I say, it's not too much, but God can help you. There is a lot of strangers, a lot of people that need help, but they don't know how to talk sometimes. They don't know how to express themselves, and they need help. Amen? There is another form of stranger. They are at your workplace or at your school, sitting al alone at lunchtime. They are in our city. They are runaways, cast off, exploited, down on their look, abused physically and emotionally, addict, mentally ill, somehow not acceptable to most people but they are people, no less. Somewhere among all those, there is people, Jesus is referring to us, the least of this. Somewhere in there, we can find a stranger. Someone we can look at and whose face we can picture as the face of Jesus. Be sure of this, for every person you look at and thinks they don't really fit in, there is a person on the end, other end of that who feels very much like he or she doesn't fit in, probably needing help. A person who wishes he or she was not a stranger. We can relate to that person. In fact, we must. It starts with accepting the fact that Jesus was a stranger. Thinking of this. A young couple is expecting their first baby. They are already being looked down around their little hometown, but now the government requires them to make a journey 60 miles over land to register in the census. They go to Bethlehem, and the usual means of hospitality is full. No room, no place for the baby to born. So the baby born away from home in a place in an animal feeding through. While he's still a baby, they are treat against his life. The family flees to Egypt 350 miles away. In other words, they become refugees. The boy become a man and begin his years as a traveling teacher, preacher. During this time, he is voluntarily, voluntarily homeless person, depending upon the care and hospitality of others to sustain him. He hangs out with the untouchable people of society and the ones with bad reputation. His enemies are all so happy to slam him for it. He visits his own town. They reject him as his own family is looking for him to get him to stop. Is it any wonder that John says about Jesus in John 1, verse 10 to 11? He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. No wonder Jesus said, with the same measure that you have done it 
one of these, the least of these, my brothers, you have done it to me. How can we not have an interest in strangers? We have gathered in the name of one who lived as a stranger while he was here. How can we not care about strangers? We wear the name of one who created the world and then was treated as strangers as he walked in. Why would my house not be open to a stranger? So this next fact about strangers shouldn't surprise any of us. Jesus' followers are strangers. There is also a risk when you associate with strangers. The risk that you will become an alien yourself. Sure enough, when we accept Jesus, some of the words that describe us are the title of strangers to this world. Jesus was speaking to the 12, but the principles apply to all of us who are Christ's followers. John 15, verse 18 to 19 says, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hates me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. When we make the decision to follow Jesus, we made a choice to break from conformity to this world and to be accepted as the household of God. We choose to become like Jesus, people who are in this world, but who seem strangely out of place while we are here. John said, in John 3.13, do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. And Peter said, in Peter 2.11, beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshy lust, which wear, wage war against the soul. The soul. You became an alien and a stranger because Jesus was a stranger. But strangers help strangers too. So, what now? Here's what should happen, brothers and sisters. Strangers can help strangers. It was um, way back in Israel's story that God established this precedent. People who live among them, but who were not Israelites, were supposed to be treated well. Strangers were supposed to be cared for. And the reason God gave them was simple. You were strangers too. Leviticus 19, verse 33 and 34 says, when a foreigner resides among you and your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. We are strangers out to help those who are strangers. It is a Christian duty. It was very important in the early church because so many depended upon the hospitality of others as they traveled. It was already a very important part of Middle East culture. They figured it was an honor to have someone be a guest. That person was sent from God and they were under the care and protection of their host. This practice has always been and will always be an important part of the church. So let's talk about some ways that we can help strangers. Helping strangers, we start here. 
There should be never be a person inside of these worlds who feels like strangers among us. Amen? We are usually pretty good at this. I know. <laughs> but even with the best of effort, there are times when people just feel out of place. It takes everyone effort to change that church. Let's make it our goal every week to make sure that nobody ever feels as a stranger at people's church. Seek them out. That's why we wear name tag every first um, Sunday of each month. We maybe should every week. <laughs> Shows hospitality too. Everyone likes Mr. Rogers because he was inviting them not be strangers. You can do that wherever you go, in your neighborhood, in your community. Open up your home. Have a party. Who likes the party? Everyone likes the party, right? <laughs> <laughs> People are getting more and more isolated. I'm continually surprised at how many people are just longing for someone to reach out to them. You can do this right in your street, especially as the weather is nicer right now. A plate of cookies goes a long way. <laughs> Find creative ways to reach out to people who are strangers. Have you thought of missionaries in another nation or those who are in a military duty in another land? Will not we be need to be able to send a note of appreciation and encouragement to someone like those people who are being strangers there on our behalf? Pray and ask the Lord to lead you to a stranger and help to the best of your ability. Let's pray. Father Lord, Father, thank you because we feel like stranger at what time, and you make us feel welcome in your family. Thank you, Father, because your love passes all understanding, your peace. Father, your mercy with us is new every morning. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us and makes us family. Father, help us this day to look for those who still feel strangers. Father, open our eyes and we can see others' need. Father, help us not be focused only in our own needs, not focused in ourselves. Open our mind, open our heart, and we can feel what others feel. And help, Father, each of us to be a bridge for others. Father, that we can show others the same love that you show us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this morning. Father, thank you because our heart is ready to bless others. Thank you, Father, for the way that you bring us. Thank you for Jesus. The same way that Jesus was the way to you, Father. Help us to be the way that others can come to you. Other, Father, can find your love and don't feel like strangers anymore. Father, you are amazing. We are here because you take care of us, Father, and you are the center of our heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.